Hey guys, welcome to another commentary done by Diggity. Bottom left in corner, we got Fisheye starting as the red Protoss. Bottom right in corner, we got Nimpo starting as the yellow Zerg. This is going to be on Nemesis. Nimpo taking game one. I almost want to call it, I don't want to call it like a build order victory, but I will say Fisheye seemed to make it easier on him based on the style of build that he opted to utilize. Because <laughs> I really feel like five hatch Hydralisk is just easier for Zerg to mount a defense against the High Templar style, uh, barring robotics, drop play, things like that. And really, uh, yeah, Fisheye have struggling in game one as a result. So one game away from elimination, which would be unfortunate because I feel like he was sharp in the round of uh, earlier stages of the match. Round of 32, he honestly looked in championship form. And he is one of these guys that I feel like could take a championship. He's like, at his top caliber, I feel like he could be a Hasuli champion. Anyway, it looks like he's setting up to maybe go for Forge Expand once again. Is going to get first scout. Let's see if he mixes things up, because if it goes along a similar style of play, I would not... And also, this is... I'm not sure I like... I, I'm hoping it's a gateway first opener, only because on Nemesis, you've got the back door area, which just makes sort of Hydralisks coming down from the high ground from the right even stronger. So potential Hydralisk busts are just really vicious on the map. I, I feel like you need more troops... To, you need some sort of applied pressure, and it looks like we are going to see a pool opener over pool uh, from Nimpo. Again, I want to give the reminder, if you don't like the lag in the games, I will eventually be upgrading my computer. But uh, if you want to speed that process up, uh, have the donation drive. Oh, man, he's going Forge first. We'll see if it works out, because the cannons can fire to the high ground, depending on location. But uh, again, I feel like this is going to be a rough map with a Forge expand opener in particular for Fisheye. We'll see how it plays out. One reminder of Nemesis is like everything's high ground as well, so there's not the misfire rate uh, in this area. So it's all flat. So it's not like the cannons are going to be protected uh, from anything along those lines. Ooh, that drone taking some damage. So Fisheye, that brave probe staking claim on the natural expansion now is going to have to back out a little bit. Pylon blockade as well. So I like what Fisheye is doing at the very least. Also drone scout finding nothing, getting a little bit caught in the map architecture. Ooh, a cancellation and turn, and now Nimpo just going to give up and go up to the 3 o'clock location for a second hatchery. I do want to note that at with the reinforcements from the 3 o'clock, it's just going to have to be a pure macro hatch unless he dedicates some forces to taking down the eggs uh, at an earlier sort of route. So keep that in mind. And also, it is possible if Fisheye keeps that probe alive or sends out additional scouts, he can pretty easily get across those lines to see the information, but that was some significant delay in the early game here. Nimpo spawning a good amount of Zerglings to try to catch that initial probe. Looks like we do see a Nexus warping in the cannon, preventatively built, which is wise considering how much delay there was to that hatchery gateway as well. Gap along that edge that eventually probes will need to plug, result depending on timing. Now keep in mind these Zerglings can still take down the eggs along that back edge. So we'll have to keep an eye on that. But again, just to get, I'm gonna do another map reveal here. Eggs blockade this expansion on all edges. So we'll have to see. So that's basically boxed in until those eggs are cleared. And on top of it, it is possible that Nimbo is intentionally doing that. He, want, he might wanna take down some assimilators and do it that, uh, that way. I will say, I almost feel like when I think about it, this map is maybe even lent towards more Corsair Reaver style of play. Anyway, a slew of Zerglings making their way out. Although it's the difficulty is, is just maintaining... Oh, we do see the Hydralis done, by the way. But keep in mind, the Hydralis need to be constructed entirely. I'll be interested to see how Nimpo utilizes his larva here. Because again, he can't construct Hydralisks out of this 3 o'clock hatchery and expect them to join the fray. So he is going to have to utilize some degree of larva discipline here between his natural and his main and maybe oversaturate the three o'clock at its weird, and which has a little bit of uh, disadvantageous mining spread to try to execute kind of an off 973. But again, being able to take down that assimilator back edge and come from the high ground, although I, I believe this is still flat, but point being, you can get multiple angles of attack with your Hydralisks, which is advantageous. Anyway, Stargate being built at the main Hydra speed about halfway finished. The probe able to, well, the probe 
looked like he was kind of making aimed wander in. Still no saturation the Dyna. I, I will say this is going to be a very economically tight. This is definitely going to be a Hydro's bus for sure. Nimpo also looked like supply blocked himself for a second. But this is going to be pretty rough. Citadel of Dune again. So it looks like there are potentially going to be T DTs on the front. That... And depending on how delayed, because honestly, this is this is feeling very drone light from Nimpo in early stages between that blockade. He's really, uh, I think, muffed his build a little bit. Now the drone's starting to saturate at that three o'clock. Maybe a little bit flustered with all that blockade from Fisheye in the early game. But I will say that essentially it is possible with all of the delays from Nimpo's build that a Dark Templar might be a savior here if that Overlord gets knocked down from the front, just because, oh, look at this. Fisheye able to sneak through the lines, and it looks like he wants to go ahead and drop some cannons up on the high ground. I don't think they reach from this location, but what he can do is plant one cannon here, and I think maybe warp in a cannon on the low ground. We'll see how he plays it, but sneaky, sneaky able to get out there. Corsair also going to create a distraction with the attack on the front. No, he's going to go for gateway units out on the high ground. Even though it's, uh, I'm not even sure that this counts as high ground on Nemesis because I think all the ground is even. Hydralisks now being constructed. Now keep in mind, the Hydralisks need to come out of this base. If any Hydralisks are built here, that will basically be, <laughs> they'll be block, blocked in. And on top of it with this gateway sneaking through the lines. Oh, this is, might be trouble from Fisheye because he's built the gateway in here and the Hydralisk bust is coming and maybe he didn't recognize it and the Corsair is missing it. So now the Hydralisks are going to be on the front. He does have a good amount of cannons already down. He's got five. That might be sufficient, but he doesn't have a lot of zealots to support. He has the Dark Templar constructing, and again, that was my wonder here. So now Nimpo, if he runs up, he might be able to get that Dark Templar taken care of. Also, a Dark Templar, if it's built here at the 3 o'clock location, that could be devastating. Another Overlord attempting to get built. The Hydralisks now working. But too late, Gateway already out, which means those Hydralisks are going to get cleared. Assuming the Dark Templar goes to do something here. Okay, now starting to make movement. Corsair has cleared troops. The Dark Templar just about to make its way to the front. Dark Templar able to chase off the Hydralisks. The Zerglings trying to surround. There is an Overlord to the north. But Nimpo going to GG regardless because the Dark Templar able to make it to the 3 o'clock. Oh my goodness. So, well played from Fisheye. I think a lot of interruption in the early stages of the game threw Nimpo completely off his game. So now we're, uh, we're tied 1-1, going into a third set. Should be an exciting one. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Give a like, subscribe, listen, etc. Appreciate it. Thank you for listening.